you've been to the Netherlands, you may have noticed that pancakes are a little different here. Uh, if you go to a pancake house or a Pantakoken house, I hope that was a good Dutch accent, I don't know, uh, you may have seen that pancakes are uh, much bigger and much thinner than the traditional American pancakes I grew up with. And Americans, don't say crepe. I know you're thinking, crepe, I said that, don't say it. But the food scientist in me couldn't help but wonder what makes the Dutch style pancake so different than the American style. I don't know a ton about Dutch pancakes. I mean, I've eaten them, of course, I've lived here for almost two years now, but I like to think I know a little bit about the fluffy, airy American pancakes. So for these types of fluffy flapjacks, what we need are flour, eggs, milk. Notice I said milk, not milk. It's my Wisconsin accent. I'll try to say milk. You don't need to write that I say milk in the comments, but we need milk, salt, baking powder, butter, and just a little bit of sugar. So once we have that, we combine the dry ingredients together, we can add the wet ingredients, whisk them, and then sort of fold and very lightly uh, mix together the pancake batter. The reason I say just mix it until combined like some of those lumps in American pancakes totally fine is because this step is really important for something called developing the gluten network. Now gluten is in flour, it's the protein we find in wheat. And when gluten is hydrated, so when uh, it gets some water from the milk, because, oh, milk, milk. When it gets the water from the milk, because, you know, milk is mostly water, so gluten becomes hydrated, this protein becomes hydrated, and it likes to find other gluten molecules to sort of link up to and hold onto, and this forms a gluten network. Now, in American pancakes, we want a very uh, soft, we don't want a strong gluten network because we like the texture that this soft or weak gluten network gives us. So American pancakes don't over mix. Ooh, one more note about the gluten network in American style pancakes. So you'll notice if you look at the recipe, these types of pancakes add a good amount of butter and butter is by law 80% fat. So Butter, uh, when we add this fat, it actually also helps to prevent the gluten network from becoming too strong. I would think of it like the fat, like, I don't know, picture like little fat globules. They sort of physically get in the way of those gluten proteins trying to connect to each other. So simply by adding butter or by adding any fat or oil, those those molecules, those that fat, it gets in the way of the gluten network and also ensures in American pancakes that we have a very weak gluten network, which gives more of this like uh, fluffy structure. It prevents a dense structure from being made. The batter, it ends up being like this very thick, almost creamy looking batter. So of course you wanna be able to like ladle it onto the frying pan. Uh, but I have a feeling compared to the batter we'll make from Dutch style pancakes, uh, this stuff is very, very thick, very viscous. And this type of recipe gives these like perfectly golden brown, fluffy, tall, airy pancakes that I grew up with or that we'll call American style pancakes. Speaking of that golden brown color, I don't know if anyone has looked closely at these American style pancakes. I bought these pre-made in a Dutch grocery store. They're advertised as American style pancakes in contrast to you could also get pre-made Dutch style pancakes. But to me, uh, this color is a little weird. Like it's a little too spotty where when I traditionally had made pancakes, the whole top is golden brown, right? This, But maybe, maybe this more resembles the Dutch style pancake and that's what people like. 
I don't know, just an observation. But now I want to compare this to how Dutch people make their traditional type of pancake. And to do that, I very nicely invited myself over to my friend's house so her and her husband will teach me how to make Dutch style pancakes. So the head chef for today teaching me will be Lawrence. He's making his YouTube debut, so what could go wrong? Well, a couple things, but we pulled it together. As the official taste tester is my friend Etska. She didn't do too much else besides eat the pancakes, but she did take these behind the scene photos where you can see my jacket is pretty dirty because we just got back from mountain biking and I did fall off my bike that day. And as the sous chef, maybe the cutest of the bunch, we have Yippa, who is the goodest boy. When I arrived over, Lawrence already had everything set out. And this looks to be like the easiest pancake recipe ever. All you need is milk, eggs, a little salt, and flour. First off, no baking powder. Okay, this explains so much about Dutch pancakes. So baking powder, if you've ever cooked with it, it's a mixture of tartaric acid and sodium bicarbonate. More simply put, it's a mixture of an acid and a base. So when water is added from the wet ingredients, the acid and the base can start to chemically react. And one of the products of this reaction is carbon dioxide bubbles. And this in American pancakes where we use baking powder, this carbon dioxide, these gas bubbles, it was, is what lifts up those pancakes. It provides that, this airiness or all these air pockets in the structure of the pancake, which is why American pancakes are so much fluffier due to these gas bubbles and they tend to grow much higher in height as these gas bubbles expand compared to Dutch pancakes that don't have baking powder at all. The second thing I noticed that is missing from the recipe is butter. No butter, no oil. A little bit of oil, I was told, can be used, you know, on the frying pan to make sure the pancake doesn't stick, but there's really not like a fat source incorporated into the pancake batter. And if you remember, I already touched on like fat really impacts that gluten network, the protein network, how it forms. So in Dutch pancakes, when we don't have that fat source that sort of inhibits or impedes the gluten proteins from making a network, what I would expect is in a Dutch pancake with no fat, the gluten proteins are really able to connect with one another. They can make a very tight, a very firm network. And this explains why the texture of these two different types of pancake, American versus Dutch, is very different. Because in Dutch pancakes, you're gonna get this extremely strong gluten network that leads to a very dense or compact texture. There's no fat to stop the gluten network from becoming so strong. Let's move on to the actual process of making the pancakes to see how Lawrence does this. So first, crack the two eggs into the flour, nothing too crazy here, add a little bit of salt, and it looks like add the milk, uh, yeah, actually he'll add a lot of milk. Whoa, 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 we are using an electric mixer. Okay, I would not recommend this for American pancakes. No, like I said, American style pancakes, keep it lumpy, keep it bumpy, because using the electric mixer, we are gonna develop a very strong gluten network. We are making sure all the gluten is hydrated, that they're coming into contact, and that they're forming this really uh, compact, strong network, which gives that very uh, chewy, dense, texture of the Dutch pancakes. Look how thin that batter is. Wow, this this is so different than when I make American style pancakes where like the American batter is so viscous, it just like stands up once you put it in the frying pan. Like uh, this batter is so thin once you, you know, ladle it in the hot pan, it just sort of 
spreads out, you know, and with the help of a little swirling of the pan. Uh, yeah, this explains why the pancakes are so much thinner once they're done, especially considering, again, the Dutch pancakes don't have any baking powder to make those gas bubbles. Now, I was told the trick to know when to flip the pancake is when the top doesn't uh, have any of those like wet looking spots anymore, which I think is, yeah, good advice for American pancakes as well. But uh, Lauren's a very talented flipper, I will say, very, very impressed. All right, here we go, a fresh Dutch pancake. So look at the color, yeah, the color strikes me as a bit different, so I think if you asked an American what's like the perfect color for a pancake, they would say just like completely golden brown, where uh, I've seen this in different Dutch pancakes. I've eaten it's more like this pale hue or it's a bit like spotty uh, where it's brown. Now, this type of brown color in pancakes is due to a reaction called Mallard browning. You see this in all types of food from like toast to coffee to cocoa. It's what gives all these foods like the characteristic brown color and also their flavors. To get Mallard browning in foods, you need protein and a special type of sugar called reducing sugars. It just is something special about the chemical structure, but and more generally, you need protein and sugar that react in Mallard browning. Now, in both Dutch and American pancakes, we have lactose, which is sugar from the milk. But in American pancakes, if you remember, we also add a bit of sucrose. So we have this extra sugar in American pancakes, but sucrose itself doesn't actually participate in Mallard browning. It doesn't have the right chemical structure. But what can happen under heat is that sucrose sort of splits or degrades into two smaller sugars. And these new sugars, the lactose and glucose, they are reducing sugars or those special type of sugars that are able to participate in mallard browning. So I think maybe this more homogeneous, total golden brown hue in American pancakes maybe because it has both lactose, but also that extra sucrose that could break down under heat. Well, it's time for our toppings, which are a little different here because maple syrup isn't like the king of pancake toppings. I've seen people use like honey, apple, like apple syrup or apple stroop. Um, powdered sugar is very, very common but also savory options like cooking in bacon or ham. Even I've had a kimchi inspired pancake here. So there's a lot of sweet options, but also a lot of savory pancake options. One thing Eska did teach me was that most Dutch people will put their toppings in the center of the pancake, but then roll it up and then cut it into smaller pieces to eat. Well, I think it's time for us to enjoy our pancakes. We have done all the hard work, but let me know in the comments what looks more delicious, Dutch style or American pancakes?